Good morning, Branson. Been a great week, hasn't it? It's going to get better, too. We're going to have a nice service today. We uh, hope to have some Bible study groups coming up. Again, I'd like to <coughs> encourage you. <coughs> We're having the Dead Philosopher Society meeting tomorrow. We'll meet on the first and third. No, wait. Tuesday. Yes. First no, Monday. First, Monday. first and third Mondays. That's right. We changed one. We're changing it back. First and third Monday. So tomorrow, 1030, 12, in the Fellowship Hall. It'll, it'll be, you'll really appreciate it. And, of course, Wednesday, we're just starting a brand-new Bible class, 1030 to 12, downstairs. So we really appreciate anybody. If you're not doing anything, come on down. You're really going to like it. Uh, thank you for the prayers about my eyes. My eyes are better today, but sometimes I feel like the Apostle Paul. If I remember correctly, the only thing Paul prayed to the Lord about was a thorn in his flesh. And people, theologians feel that was his eyes. I hope I get a better response because his response three times was, my Grace is sufficient for thee. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> so, but I, I would say this. I've had people ask me about it. I have an application to the Mayo Clinic, and they're going to be calling me Monday to see what's going to happen. And everything is going to be good. Everything is definitely going to work out. Thank you for all that. And we have Judy is going to talk. And then, <laughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> well, this is a first. Come on, Bobby. Let's go. Good morning. We are going to pass out visitor bread for the first time in 14 months, so our bakers have been busy. Uh, and today is a special day because we'll give one loaf in our cute little boxes, one per family to our visitors, and then our regular attendees and members will have a box for you out in the narthex that you can pick up on your way out of church. Because we, we're just so excited to be doing this again. So enjoy. Thank you, Bobby. <clears throat> well, I'm here with joyful news this morning. I was asked to mention a little about the thrift store because there, some of you probably, and particularly if you're visitors, don't know what we're doing over there. Some days we don't either. However, it's called By the Way Thrift Shop. This is our 14th season. We have been closed for 14 months due to the pandemic. We are 100% um, volunteer. We also... Uh, all of our merchandise has been donated, and it's sold at a um, very low price, and we're trying to help those in our community and our church who really are in need and of support. Uh, this, In order to get ready for the thrift store, because it had been closed, and there had been some mold growing in our old refrigerator, which was an answer to prayer. We now have a new refrigerator, and it's working great. During the five weeks that we've been getting ready, everything over there, every shelf, every floor, every item was washed, scrubbed, and disinfected. Our volunteers put in over 250 hours before we even opened last Thursday, this past Thursday. Uh, but I want to tell you about what happened. We set records three days in a row, higher than we have ever had donated in money. It isn't about the money, it is about the mission, but we are absolutely thankful and joyous for what has gone on. We now are going to be accepting uh, donations, so some of you that have been carrying things around all year in your trunk because we didn't have room over here, give me a call. Uh, there's several days that we can meet over there and take your, take your things. Anyway, I just want to thank all the volunteers for the many hours and the love that they poured into this. If anyone would like to be just an as-needed person volunteer for when our volunteers to have vacation or something, give me a call. I guarantee you it will be a very fun thing to work with us over there. We all get along. We're kind of like family, though. Sometimes uh, we can disagree to disagree, <laughs> but in the end, we love the Lord, so we love each other. Thank you. Uh, 
of, well, there are wonderful messages painted on rocks. And this last week, we did our kindness uh, project, rock painting project. And uh, after church, come on by and take a look at the wonderful, beautiful messages that will be dispersed all over who knows where. It's, the, it's up to whoever painted them. And uh, if you would like, uh, if you like what you see and you would like to try it, I have a rock over here in a bucket just for you. Uh, during this communion service, if you get some juice and bread ready, we can participate with this. And Chris, if you could help getting some juice up here, <laughs> we appreciate that very much. All right, go ahead, Sandy. You want to look at What a joy that is. Not only do we have our family all together where we can hug and we can touch each other, we have people participating in the service again. Not that we didn't appreciate all that Al did, uh, but we do appreciate all the participation. And you will see changes today. One is there will be elders presiding at the communion table. And I know that you will appreciate that. You will still partake of your communion, however, in the pew. We also have uh, the fellowship hall open downstairs. I'm told there's, there will be coffee for those of you that like to gather and visit a little bit. Although I will have to tell you, I loved the buzz and the hum that was here before the service last Sunday. It was such a joy to see everyone greeting each other and we can still continue that downstairs and I'm not saying you can't be greeting each other up here but remember that also towards the end of the month we will start our fellowship dinners again and a lot of us are looking forward to that fried chicken and uh, I also uh, looks like we're getting the yard washed uh, I also uh, want to tell you that we are opening up as best we can and there will be further things that will happen at, as we go on. Um, and the main thing, it, follow your bulletin. There are a little bit of glitches today, but we will try to get that lined out. Uh, just go, go with what you see happening, is all I can say. The other thing is, I want to remind you that if you did not pick up one of these last Sunday about our love, kindness, and caring for the month that we are doing, it was a joy to be involved in painting the rocks. It was a joy to just greet people. And even following the calendar made some great uh, inspirations for what you could do as an act of kindness. Because after all, we are the family of God. We are going to share and love and care for one another. And just as we are coming back together as a family today, I want you to be very aware of what we are trying to do with our service. And now for our call to worship. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister, mother and father. We are all family. What amazing thing. Jesus counts us as his family. So we're today in our service going to join our brothers and sisters in Christ as we attempt to follow the will of God today and every day in our lives through our acts of kindness, care, and loving, and through just our fellowship with one another. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we come together today to ask for your guidance 
and also to be aware of your will in what you would have us to do. We ask your blessing on this service, on those who are participating in providing the music, on those who are coming forward and helping with the serving of communion, and finally, we ask for your blessing upon our minister as he brings us the sermon this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now we will lift our voices, singing holy, holy, holy. I ask that you stand because how can you praise God without standing?
Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, once again, we come before your throne. On this Sunday morning, Lord, and this day, Father, help us to understand that we can do things that can help change our community, things that can change our county, the state, things that if everyone else would do, we could have world peace. And Lord, teach us to have empathy and compassion. Help us, instead of tuning people out when they don't agree with us, help us to understand, to listen, to try and connect. And when we see those who are in trouble, those who are in need, that we can feel compassion in our heart. Help us, Lord, to be your obedient servants, to be your ambassadors here in this community throughout the world. And give us the strength, the courage, the love, and your Holy Spirit. And we can do everything you want us to do. Again this day, we thank you for, once again, taking care of tragedies that happen in our country. This latest one, the COVID-19. Father, we knew that you would eradicate this eventually. We give you our honor and glory. And also this day, Lord, <clears throat> let us be aware of those <clears throat> who are still struggling with financial difficulties, for those who have family and marital difficulties, for those who have physical difficulties that are difficult for them to go through, for those who have lost loved ones in nursing homes or others through this, this pandemic, that you give them families, give them the comfort, Lord. But also, Father, help us not to just look at the negative parts of life. Help us to be grateful, to be thankful. We have eyes, if we do, we can see. We have arms, we have legs, to be grateful. To be able to see the beauty in the world. A beautiful sunset, beautiful sunrise. To see beauty in other people. To see and understand and try to be empathetic and to feel the struggles that our people are going through. Help us to become aware, Father. Help us that we can realize who is our neighbor. Who is our neighbor? In this day, Father, we pray that you'll be with us. I pray you will bless each and every one that is here and those watching that the message, the song, the words, that we will honor you this day, Lord. And now, out of respect to you, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
choir gets to stay through the communion hymn, so you can hear them. Since we're on the theme of family and what we can do for each other, I know that all of you truly look forward to coming to the table and being with family. So the table has been set for us today. On this table, though, there are no place cards of judgment or dishes of condemnation, only the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You are invited to come before this table and feast before the Lord of our salvation. We will now sing, Nearer my God to thee. took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Eat this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. We take this bread representing your life that was broken for us. We reflect on the agonizing pain and suffering you took for us as we celebrate your faithfulness to us. Your death, Lord, gives us life, life abundantly, and we praise you forever. And the prayer continues. God of love, the cup of blessing that we bless is a participation in the blood of Christ. Thank you for this communion. You said you would not drink of it again until you return. That day is coming soon, and our desire is to be with you on that day. But today, we remember. Amen. Now 
is the time for the collection of our tithes and offerings. We'll not be passing collection plates at this time, but instead we ask that you leave your gifts in the box in the narthex. You may also click on BransonChristianChurch.com, find the word donate, and simple directions are there for you to follow to give to the church and its missions. May God bless these gifts that we will receive. And I thank you. Let us pray. Lord, we offer before you our gifts of gratitude and love. Shower these gifts with your blessing and accept them as you also accept us. May they be used to fulfill your will and care for our brothers and sisters. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke 7, verses 11 to 16. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. This ends our scripture reading. An old man was wondering if his wife <clears throat> was losing her hearing. And so one evening, while his wife was sitting in her recliner, he stepped up behind her and he said very softly, Honey, can you hear me? Hmm. No response. Okay. He got up a little bit closer and he said, Honey, can you hear me? Still no response. So he got right behind her near her ear and he said, Honey, can you hear me? And she said, For the third time, yes! Unheard of, I know. If you didn't get that one, in about 10 minutes, they'll hit you real hard. <laughs> Empathy and compassion. I will define what both of them means, and we can go home. No, no, I'll spend a little more time on it. Let's start with empathy. Empathy is really just listening to another human being, trying the best you can understand what they're saying, reading their face movements and mannerisms, and trying to connect with them. That's empathy. Compassion is pretty much the same thing, only you do it. Let me give you an example. Say that you were walking by and you saw a really tragic thing happening on the side of the road. And you say to yourself, wow, how horrible. Boy, 
well, I'm sure glad that my health is good. And, and you really understand. And you feel for them. Yeah, yeah. But you can just keep on going. Compassion, all that, but compassion is action. Ooh, I like that. Compassion is action. You do something. You go over and try to help them. See the difference? So we're talking about empathy and compassion. Remember, compassion is action. That's good. Have you noticed that people are not as empathetic Empathic or empathetic, the, bio, the dictionary says either one, empathic or empathetic, either one. You can use either one. But have you used, seen in our community and the world, it seems like, people are not as empathic as they should be. Do you ever drive in Chicago on the freeway? Lord help you if you get lost. If you, never, if you live around Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. Good luck to you. But and many times, people don't seem to care. Now, psychologists have done research. In the last 30 years, our nation has become much less empathetic, much less. And you can see it around you. Relationships are destroyed because... Well, I'm a Republican or a Democrat. You're nuts, and I'm right, so I can't have you around. If not, they tune you right out. If somebody, if, so, if somebody disagrees, they just tune you out. They don't listen. They don't understand. You're done. Uh, I'm not on social media, only in order to put the sermons up, but I guess it's, what do they do? They block you or get, somehow get rid of you. They can do that. However it's done. But in real life, have you noticed that people are becoming a little bit more rude? There's a reason for that. And it's going on. And to give you an idea, we live in the United States of America. But lately, I'm wondering if we're the divided states of America. I'm wondering it, but if you look at research, it says you don't have to wonder anymore. We are. We're divided about... Republicans or Democrats, conservatives, liberals, the 1% against the 99% of race, sex, faith. You name it, we're divided. But people, instead of trying to understand where you're coming from, you're not good. You don't agree with me, you're not. Instead of trying to understand. So I will ask you, in the last couple of weeks, have you been talking with somebody and you sort of just tuned them out because you know, they weren't on your wavelength? Or did you really try and understand them? Okay. Imagine a husband and wife arguing. Well, he's, she's a Republican, he's a Democrat. They're going to try and change each other? Forget it. Not going to happen. Well, it would be very difficult. Where is empathy? Are you an empathic person? Let me ask you this very clearly before you answer. Have you ever talked to somebody... And they, they might have asked you, how are you doing? And you tell them, well, and my shoulder's really been bothering me. Oh, okay. And then they just start talking like, whatever you said didn't mean anything. They tune you right out. They didn't care. And you're wondering, what's that about? But these things are happening more and more. More and more. And so, what is the answer? How... Do we try and help our community to become more kind, more empathic, and have more compassion? Well, let's see what the Bible has to tell us. In our gospel reading, Jesus gives us some really good insight about Jesus. Jesus is going into the city. He's at the gate with his disciples. And they see this funeral coming by. The man in the coffin was this open. And 
he sees the mother, the mother of this, this man. It was her son. Her son has died, and she's a widow. And she's very, as you can see, very upset. The Bible tells Jesus looked at this, the mother, the widow, and he felt compassion for her. Now, remember, compassion needs action. So what does Jesus do? He says to, to the woman, he goes up to her and he says, do not weep. And then he goes over to the coffin. He puts his hand on the coffin. And then he says, young man, I say to you, arise. And he does. He begins to talk. And then the Bible says that Jesus takes him and presents him to his mother. Wow. That is really something. Jesus knew exactly what it's like when someone has lost a loved one. But again, Jesus did more than just feel the other person's pain. He did something. He took action. And there's another great parable in the New Testament. And I want, I want you to listen to this. You've all read it. It's one of the oldest ones. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Remember that? Jesus is talking, and there's, there's Pharisees in the crowd, of course. And while he's talking, a, a, an instructor in the law, a lawyer, to use that term lawyer because it makes it sound like lawyers are not always the wonderful people they can be. But instructor of the law said, teacher, didn't even call him rabbi, he said, teacher, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, what does the law say? And the the Lord is trying to trap him. Well, the law says that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And Jesus said, that is the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But then the attorney says, uh, excuse me, who is my neighbor? Jesus knows who he's dealing with here. So Jesus then begins to tell the, the, the lawyer a parable. He begins by saying, there was a man, he was a Jew, and he lived in, in Jerusalem. He's going to Jericho, but on the way, he's ambushed, beaten badly. He's almost half dead, bleeding and everything. He's on the side of the road. A little later, a priest comes by. He looks at all of that, just keeps on walking. A little bit later, a Levite comes by. He sees a man on the side of the road. Hmm. He just keeps on walking. But then, a Samaritan is coming by. Jews hate Samaritans. Samaritans hate Jews. But the Samaritan sees that man on the side of the road. You can see he's in really bad shape. And you would think the Samaritan of all would just keep on going, but he doesn't. The Bible says the Samaritan looked at that man, and he felt compassion for him. Remember, compassion, action. And then he decided, now think about this. Just get this in your mind. This is a Samaritan. The Samaritan's on his way. He may have an appointment. He may be in a hurry. He also knows if he stops and helps this man, whoever beat him up could beat him up. And he just, and a Samaritan, kill him. But he makes that decision. He felt compassion to do something. And the Bible says he went over and he 
bandaged this guy the best that he could, put him on his, on, on his horse and, and took him down to the inn, came in and told the keeper, the innkeeper, want a room? And, and he said, I'm, I'm going to stay with this guy tonight. Make sure he, he lives and make it through the night. Spends the night helping this, this guy out, the Jew. Make sure he lives through the night. Through the night, he wakes up in the morning. He made it. He goes to the innkeeper and says, I have to go. I have an appointment. But here's the money for last night, and here's some more money. And if you need more, when I come back, I'll pay it. Just take care of him. And then Jesus says to the attorney, he says, which one of these three do you think was neighbor to him? And the lawyer says, hmm. well, the one that showed mercy, compassion. And Jesus says, yes, go and do the same. Now, let's take a look at us. Are there times when you've been in Walmart even, and you see this little family, and you know, maybe the Holy Spirit's touching your heart, you know they need help. And you think to yourself, man, what a horrible thing. Tweesh. Ha. Huh. But you don't do anything. You don't, you don't give them a buck or whatever. You just leave. And then later on you think, ugh, I should have done something. And sometimes we don't have to give a person $1,000. What you understand about life, at least what I do, is a lot of times people don't need any, any money or like that. They just need to be understood. They need to know that the person knows what's going on with them. Men are kind of funny in, in, in counseling. <laughs> a lot of men are like shell answer men. The wife says, I got this problem. She says, no, no problem. I'll take care of it. Not realizing she's got friends that could take care of it. She just wants him to listen, to be with her, understand what she's going through. Isn't it a wonderful thing if you're talking with somebody, number one, they listen, and when you get done, they just they don't change the subject, it's all about them, but they listen to you, and you have the feeling they understand you. That's healing, people. You can start healing another human being simply by listening. Now, I got to be careful. I, Took me 73 years to admit that I have ADHD. And I'm very annoying, but not as annoying as I used to be. But when I was a little boy, the favorite phrase I still remember to this day, Alan, may we have your thoughts over here? Always in the first row. And I always remember my mother. When she wanted to tell me something important, she would take hold of my face. Alan. This is what I want. And then she knew that I understood. Because I'm one of those guys, as a teenager, I'm that kid that's sitting in a chair, and mom's giving me a lecture, and I'm looking, and I'm nodding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I'm thinking about what's going on outside. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not listening, is it? So many wives would just want their husband to listen. Do you know why wives ask you the same thing? Five times a week because you never get it yet. If you understand it, they'll leave you alone, folks. Come on, guys. This is really special stuff. It really it works, too. Listen. I have to tell you this. Sometimes I have to get to an approach to this apologist to help men try to understand. So I said like this. I say like this. Look. I told them a story so they get it. Say a little parable like Jesus said. He says, well, let's assume you and your wife, you're going to surprise your wife and you're going to go to Colorado out where skiing. Okay? 
and you have to have a pilot's license. You get a little tub, plane, and you go up there. But when you get near it, all of a sudden the plane starts having problems, and you have to kind of crash land there in one of the Colorado mountains. And it's cold. You're okay both, but you're cold. Neither one of you had, had uh, coats on. But your wife is freezing. If you don't do anything, she's going to freeze to death. I said, would you, would you save your wife? She says, yeah. Even with her? Yeah. Okay. So what you do, if you put your arms around her when it's really cold, and you're, you're not, you put your arms around her, guess what's going to happen according to the second law of thermodynamics? Her temperature is what? Going to go up, correct? Going to get warmer, right? We have scientists here. But what happens to his body temperature? Any scientist, please. It goes down, correct? So he's going to suffer just a little bit in order to save his life. And to save her life, he has to suffer a little bit. Her temperature is going to go up, but his is going to go down. Oh, just a little bit painful. And then I said, you said that you would uh, have a little pain for your wife. He said, well, of course. Okay. I would like you to start doing this. Just listen. I mean, really listen to her when she has something to say. And if you really do, you can start developing some compassion, some empathy. And if you get to the point you can feel her pain, there'll be like an invisible beam. And she'll feel it. And she'll start feeling a little better. And you might not feel quite so good, but she feels that now she knows you love her. And you listen to that beam. And that's how you make a great relationship. Fellas, most of the time, wives. They have friends that, that, that can fix some of the problems. They don't need you to be a shell answer man. They just want you to listen, understand what they're going through. That's called empathy. And you can have compassion and really do something about it. Empathy, compassion. In a few minutes, our service will be over. When you go out today and you see someone and you say to yourself, man, that person, at least, hi, how are you? Or somebody you know, give them a hug. And look, as a pastor, everybody tells me they're doing okay. Hardly anyone says, I go in the hospital, somebody's dying, and they ask me how I'm doing. Not a joke, everybody. I said, look... (laughs) When you, act, when you tell me that everything's okay, and I look at you, I kind of have a feeling, maybe not. But if I have that chance to talk with you and just listen to what's going on with you, what's going on, what's happening, and any of you can do this, that's when the healing begins. Remember, I believe the most important thing you can give to another human being is your time, your attention, your listening. Wow. They really care about me. You see, if you really listen to them, that means you really do care. And if you don't, it is what it is. Remember this. I want to close with this. For decades... For centuries, philosophers, scientists have said you're either born with empathy or you're not. It's an on or off button. And I want to tell you today, that's a lie. Empathy is not a trait. It's a skill. And believe me, I've seen a lot of men who've been taught to have empathy. It's a skill. But in your head, you say, well, I can't do it. You're not going to. It's not a trait. It's a skill. You can. Now, of course, there's some people who have alexithymia. That's Greek for A, no, and alexa, words, and thymia, emotions. No words for emotions. That's the definition. No matter what anybody tells you, that's the definition. There's an autistic spectrum from their Asperger's and that. Does that mean they can't have empathy? No. The research is showing that there are discoveries being made that people can learn 
to be empathic. It's a skill. And you can learn it. Look, if we're going to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, don't we have to listen? Don't we try to understand? Don't we try to connect when we're talking with somebody? If Christ is within us, aren't we trying to connect with them? Remember, that's what people will remember about you. They'll remember if you listen. This is what our entire message this morning is about. Can you make a difference in this world? Remember, you have one job title that's two words long. That's it. Change lives. Have you changed any lives in the past week? Have you at least smiled at somebody? Have you given somebody a hug? Have you made somebody feel that they're not all alone? All right, that's your assignment, boys and girls. Show compassion. Amen? Amen. back up. For our closing hymn, if anyone needs prayer, if anyone needs, if you'd like to join the church, whatever thing, you can come up here during that. But now this is God's invitation. And so let us stand and sing our hymn of invitation. And now may God bless each and every one of you. May God watch over you and keep you safe. And may God create within you a heart of courage and love and obedience to go forth into our community and to show compassion. Amen. I'm going to hit this up. My heart.